Today, more than ever in the past, there is an increasing amount of doubt arising in the minds of people regarding whether the Bible is a reliable source of truth. Some have even made the determination that the Bible, as we have it today, has been so terribly altered and edited throughout the centuries that none of it can be relied on. A new revelation is therefore necessary in order to restore the gospel. Even more so than with the New Testament, we have today a clear line of extremely consistent manuscripts for the Old Testament. The oldest manuscripts of the Old Testament date as far back as 250 BC. The oldest of the oldest of these Old Testament manuscripts were found amongst what is called the Dead Sea Scrolls, discovered between 1946 and 1956. These scrolls, a total of 981 manuscripts found in 11 caves, contains much of the Old Testament text, just as we have it today, with only minor differences that would make no changes to the ideas expressed in our modern Bibles. In regard to New Testament manuscripts, we have some 5,780 hand-copied Greek manuscripts available today. These manuscripts are comprised of individual copies of various letters, as found in the New Testament, parts or whole manuscripts of the Gospels, etc. In addition to these Greek manuscripts, we also have thousands of manuscripts that had been translated into other languages such as Latin, Coptic, and Syriac. The way in which the New Testament was copied and distributed, however, is quite different than the Old Testament. The early Christian church experienced varying levels of persecution throughout its early years, primarily by the hands of the Roman Empire. This persecution did not take place throughout the entire empire all at once, but rather took place intermittently and in different locations. As early Christians fled persecution, they copied and took their manuscript copies with them. At times, it would mean death should they be found with a copy of one of Paul's letters or even a part of one of the gospel manuscripts, and so extreme discretion was required along with mass production and distribution. It would be considered highly dangerous and risky should a single copy of a manuscript not be copied multiple times and distributed in many directions. This would ensure that someone, somewhere, would have a copy that could be later copied when the owner either got away from the area of persecution or when the persecution subsided. By about 100 AD, hundreds if not thousands of manuscript copies of the New Testament writings had been distributed to the far reaches of the Roman Empire. These manuscripts were often separated by hundreds or thousands of miles, were kept discreetly and were treasured by those who had them. The persecution although a negative thing for those who were experiencing it, actually forced the New Testament writings to be copied with even more fervor and scattered even farther. Considering the fact that these writings were copied hundreds of times by different hands and were quickly distributed throughout a vast empire, there is an amazing amount of consistency amongst all the manuscripts we have today. While there are variations and differences amongst these manuscripts, 98% of the over 400,000 variations found make no difference or change to the meaning of the text. One type of variation that is counted, for example, would be equivalent to one of us using the word chose rather than choose in our writing. Another example would be to say an apple versus a apple. The correct English grammar would be to use the indefinite article an before any noun beginning with a vowel. However, we would have no difficulty understanding what is being written if someone writes a rather than an, would we? Finally, any thought that there could have been a wholesale purposeful altering of the New Testament text in these early years seems impossible when we consider that the majority of copies would have been impossible to access by any single group given that they had already been copied and distributed to such an extent as to cover thousands of miles. If there truly was a concerted effort at any time in the past to purposely alter the New Testament, we would certainly see a distinct and major difference between the nearly 6,000 copies we have today, but we simply do not see this. 
The question really should be, can God preserve his word? And did he? Through the prophet Isaiah, God said, For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose, and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. Isaiah 55, 10 and 11. According to Jude 1, 3, the apostles expected the gospel message to be delivered only once to the world. Beloved, although I was very eager to write to you about our common salvation, I found it necessary to write appealing to you to contend for the faith that was once for all delivered to the saints. The burden and responsibility to continue in that faith and to ensure it was communicated correctly through the decades and centuries following was placed upon the saints. After telling his reader that the faith was once for all delivered to the saints, he warns, For certain people have crept in unnoticed, who long ago were designated for this condemnation, ungodly people, who pervert the grace of our God into sensuality and deny our only Master and Lord Jesus Christ. Jude 1.4 The original gospel, as preached by Jesus' apostles, who were personal, eyewitnesses of Jesus, and who received it directly from the source, is the only gospel that is correct and true. The Apostle John reinforces this. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we looked upon and have touched with our hands, concerning the word of life. The life was made manifest, and we have seen it, and testify to it, and proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father and was made manifest to us. That which we have seen and heard we proclaim also to you, so that you too may have fellowship with us, and indeed our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son Jesus Christ. 1 John 1, 1 through 3. The Apostle Paul, even in his day, began to see an insidious pollution of the true gospel of Christ. To such an extent, he wrote the following very startling words. I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting him who called you in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. Not that there is another one, but there are some who trouble you and want to distort the gospel of Christ. But even if we, or an angel from heaven, should preach to you a gospel contrary to the one we preach to you, let him be accursed. As we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone is preaching to you a gospel contrary to the one you received, let him be accursed. Galatians 1, 6 through 9. In conclusion, we can have faith in the Bible we have today. The sheer number of copies that had been distributed throughout the world ensured God's word and the apostles' eyewitness testimony would be preserved, and certainly this was no accident. Had the early church experienced complete peace and safety, the likelihood of such a mass copy and distribution operation would have been slim. But through persecution, God used his early church to preserve the New Testament, and we are truly blessed to have it today.